So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for the very first SPAM summer school introduction to ancient metagenomics. Um, so this morning, uh, before the first break, what we will do is do a little introduction um, to the summer school, what we'll be uh, doing today and throughout the summer school as a whole. And um, then I will give the first lecture, which will be on the introduction to ancient, uh, sorry, next generation sequencing. So, once I get them on the screen. Um, so this summer school, or for the primarily Germans here, this is also a block practicum. Um, we will be going through the main steps of an ancient metronomic bioinformatic workflow, but um, trying to mix in a lot of fundamental soft skills uh, that many of us and the instructors feel have been very, very critical um, for, all, for doing such um, types of analyses. Um, we'll be focusing primarily on host-associated ancient metagenomics, so this is stuff like um, microbiomes or uh, pathogen genomics, um, but many of the skills and sort of concepts are very applicable to pretty much any form of metagenomics. Uh, and as many of you have uh, probably realised, given the sort of the setup on sort of the Denby Cloud, um, this course is both a combination of lectures, but primarily also practical hands-on exercises. So you each will ha ha should have a computing node, um, where you will be running um, through different um, the sort of commands and steps um, alongside, alongside the instructors. Um, the Courses were aimed at MSc and PhD students, um, so we are expecting quite a wide diversity of sort of prior knowledge to this. So some of the uh, uh, sections may be relatively basic um, uh, for some people, uh, but they'll be very new to others. Um, and we've also selected basically people who we feel um, have um, or, or will get the most out of the course. So people who um, are actively working on ancient metronomics already have data that they can immediately apply the concepts they will learn. Um, to uh, their data. However, also with the concept with being that you guys will also be the people who can start ex um, spreading the knowledge within your own labs, within your own um, disciplines uh, as well, um, to really sort of um, uh, yeah. build up and make the, the, the field stronger. And so we hope that by the end of the summer school that you'll have an understanding on a, how to effectively carry out the major bioinformatic components of um, an ancient metronomic project, but also uh, in an open and transparent manner. What I mean by this is that in that at least uh, group, uh, Tina's group, we're very, very, very into um, open science and, and being as open as possible to make, again, sort of spread the knowledge and really improve the quality of the ancient metronomic work. It is already actually pretty good um, in most cases. Um, but we really um, hope that by teaching you the skills about open science, reproducibility and so on, you'll also be able to, again, make it easier for you to sort of train other people um, around you. Um, so a little bit of a, a background to SPAM, given this is a slightly odd name uh, for the, the summer school. So SPAM is actually a community of primarily early career researchers uh, focusing on ancient metronomics. Um, and it's meant to be sort of a grassroots um, uh, organization, this is slightly anarchic in, in some ways, um, where we basically come together in a very collaborative manner to try and help each other out and benefit, again, to benefit the field in this manner. Um, so we run collaborative work projects, so this is spanning multiple different labs all the way around the world. We have a yearly uh, workshop slash mini conference. Um, but primarily we're focused on basically having a Slack channel, which you are more than welcome to join. So if you go to the website, and then the About panel, if you've not already done so, you can join the Slack channel there. And it's a place where you can basically ask questions, chat with people from different labs, get ideas, follow projects, follow the news, follow, see sort of latest papers coming out, um, uh, to basically help make a very nice and friendly um, uh, field of engine metagenomics. Um, particularly when, as some of you may be aware, there's some quite competitive uh, aspects of ancient DNA in some cases. So we really want to do this sort of opposite in many ways. Um, we also have a mailing list, which you can also sign up on, and also there's the Twitter, which you can also follow. And you can all find this on the SPAM website um, there, and I should have sent the links already in the emails previously. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge all of the sort of infrastructure and funding support. So the Werner Siemens Stiftung um, have given uh, Tina and also um, PSR for the uh, Leibniz HKI. Um, a, a large grant under which um, having a summer school was a part of, and that is sort of provide, providing a lot of the funding for this. Also, SPAM, um, many of the organizers are a part of SPAM, and this is where a lot of materials coming from SPAM. So obviously, thank you to everybody there. 
Um, all the com compute nodes are being provided for free uh, by the Denby network, which is a German um, wide uh, uh, project to basically supply cloud computing to uh, any academic institution. And so that's also been very, very uh, helpful to basically give you large, quite large uh, computing nodes, and again, basically uh, free. And also institutionally wise, obviously the Leibniz KKI, but we also have the JSMC, who's the graduate school at FSU Jena, um, and they will be uh, providing so sort of the accreditation for the sort of ECTS points, if you want those. And then in the US, uh, at Harvard University, we have uh, the Max Planck Harvard uh, Center for... Arcuse Science for Asian Mediterranean. Science for Mediterranean, thank you, Tina. Um, which is in actually in tandem with the Max Planck Institute for Evolution and Anthropology, um, and they, MAM, are also supply, uh, giving sort of the accreditation for the um, certificates from uh, the American, uh, so America's perspective. So thank you to all of them. Um, a little bit of statistics about you, because given you're in science, you're probably pretty into data. Um, so we had 112 applicants, um, and originally this was only 25 places, but because we found it so difficult to cut down um, to just 25, we actually increased slightly the number of places to 30. This, all of you come from um, 12 different uh, countries, or your institutions are based in 12 different countries. Um, we have a pretty good, relatively good um, uh, balance in terms of uh, self-reported male to female or men, man to woman uh, ratio there. Most people are early year PhD students, 27, but we have a few uh, MSc students as well. And my cursor's on the wrong screen, apologies for that. And because I am a very big computer nerd, I was also interested to see what um, operating systems you are using. And uh, Apple or Mac OS X is um, the most popular at 13, but Windows comes quite close after that. And there's a few people close to my heart running Linux, which is very good because you're gonna, that's going to make uh, working on bioinformatics a bit easier, as you'll find out later. Uh, you're also there. Your instructors are just as sort of diverse as uh, the people attending the course. Um, so there are uh, 13 of us in total. Um, uh, most of us are from the MPI here in EVA and working in message genomics. All of the instructors will introduce themselves later. But also would like to thank um, a couple of people who are uh, taking time out of their uh, normal work, who don't really work on intermetagenomics to help out, and namely that's Clemens Schmidt, who's a computational archaeologist um, here in Stefan Schiffel's group. Then we have Nikolai Oskolov, who's at SciLife Lab in Sweden, um, who dabbles a bit in ancient metagenomics, but also does a lot of uh, machine learning stuff, which is really cool. We have Theseus, who's also in Stefan Schiffel's group, um, uh, doing human population genetics. And also a last minute addition, because um, unfortunately our original uh, lecturer had to drop out, um, but Sebastian Duchesne, who is in the University of uh, Melbourne, has very, very kindly um, jumped in at the last minute uh, and he'll be teaching you about phylogenomics and sort of, uh, of uh, microbes. And we're all from many, many different uh, countries as well. So the Australian flag should also be in this, this, uh, this uh, set of emojis. So I just want to go through a few organizational points. Um, so firstly, any attendance of any form of spam, whether it's in the Slack channel or in an event, uh, on Twitter, you have to follow the code of conduct. It is quite standard. It's don't be rude, be respectful, be friendly, be helpful, and so on. If you have any problems, um, for whatever reason, you contact either me or Tina, or if you have any problems with the instructors, you can also uh, contact the um, to Spam contact officers who are independent of the summer school, which is Betsy and Shreya. Um, their contact details are on the code of conduct website here. We are on Gather Town. You've all joined already, which I think is uh, probably good uh, indicator that it's, everything's working. So, as you can sort of see, it is sort of like Zoom, it's a web conferencing software, but it adds an extra dimension, which is you're in the virtual room, you have little avatars, so you actually feel a bit more that you're around um, with other people. I really like Gather Town because it helps me get rid, rid of Zoom fatigue, because I'm bored of looking at people's faces. I much prefer looking at little Pokemon icons, because it reminds me of when I was young. Um, but if you have any problems, you can always check the, uh, the website, or ask me, or uh, any of the instructors who should be pretty familiar with this. Oh yeah, uh, so a few, a few tips. So you can walk around with the arrow keys. If you get stuck or you get trapped between a group of people and you want to run away, if you hold down G, you can become a ghost and walk through people. Um, I don't think we really have any objects in the, in the summer school space, but if you press X, you can check things there. In terms of etiquette, it's 
useful if you have your actual, your real name, um, uh, if possible, because that helps us to know who you are. Um, if you need to edit that for whatever reason, the bottom left where your current name is, you should see the, the pen symbol, um, which you can't see on the screenshot, um, but you can edit it there. Generally, we would like to ask, if possible, to keep your cameras on, but mic, mic off. So the camera's on, so the instructors can actually um, keep track of who is, who is speaking uh, and you know, who's uh, sort of listening. It's useful to get that feedback to make sure people are following you. But obviously, if you have your microphone off, it stops uh, accidental interruptions. Um, during the lectures, you can use the pedestal on the far right to ask a question. So we'll practice and do that in a minute if necessary. Um, there's a sort of orange square. You stand on that, the entire room will hear you. Um, in the workshop, the, there is no sort of sound isolation, so everyone can speak um, and hear each other, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, we recommend that if you um, only have a single screen, so not a dual screen, like a, a second monitor, if you go to the settings um, by going to the Gather logo in the bottom right, left hand, sorry, bottom left hand corner, settings, go to audio vid video, and then turn off auto idle muting off. That is because if you switch tab, it may basically um, mute your, uh, your screen, um, so you can't actually hear it. So if you have problems with that, you can check the settings here. Um, a couple of other things, um, if you're on OS X, so the Mac um, uh, operating system, we generally recommend to use the desktop app because there's been lots of reports, at least in our institute, that um, using the browser can make your fan go crazy and your laptop heat up for some reason, whereas, whereas this does not happen on the desktop app. I've not heard this so often recently, so it might actually they might have made the, those improvements. But if you, have a, if you have that problem, yeah, we recommend using the desktop app. And if you've not already, try to make sure you can allow screen sharing. This is, again, primarily an issue with OSX, where they try and lock screen sharing within um, some system settings of the operating system rather than um, the browser. Um, so maybe you can try that a bit later in a, in a break. And if you have problems with that, uh, let me know. Um, so for um, a quick overview of the schedule, um, today we have um, Introduction to NGS Data, which I'll be giving after this introduction. And then we have two sessions which are linking on, on from each other, which is Bare Bones Bash, which will introduce you to the command line. Um, even for some people who are quite advanced with this, you may learn a few uh, nice little tricks occasionally. So I'd keep, uh, keep up with that, and that'll be by Ida and uh, Theseus. Um, the days follow the same pattern, so you have an hour, an hour and 15 minutes introduction in the, in the morning, 15 minute break, Two hour practical session, an hour lunch, two hour, hour practical session, a short break, and then we have round tables. So these round tables are sort of a open, free speaking um, session. Uh, there won't be a, a formal slides or a formal presentation necessarily, but basically it gives you the opportunity to um, talk to the instructors or sort of experts of the different themes we've put. Um, and uh, yeah, we can give advice on your own projects and things like that and show you sort of the skills that, that or the things that we use um, in this in those contexts. And this is sort of flexible if there's something that you don't feel that is um, entirely relevant for you, you don't have to necessarily is, uh, stay for the whole, the whole point at that point. And then if you're based in Leipzig, um, we'll be having a, a dinner uh, kindly paid for by, by Tina slash Harvard um, on, on Friday. So, yes, so all the material is going to be on the website, um, so all the slides should already be there, in fact. Uh, we'll also be making walkthrough versions, um, so where it's like a, a long-form sort of text, like you could get in many sort of uh, biomechanic training sessions, but they will come up a, a bit later. Um, I'm also trying to record everything. I'm not going to guarantee this is going to work, because um, this is the first time I've done this, uh, but we'll see after, after the break. Um, and you're welcome to share all of this. All of the material is uh, under CC BY, so Creative Commons um, license. This means that you are able to share and reuse and also modify as long as you just attribute back to the original um, instructors and spam. Uh, so all the slides will have this little logo, as you can see at the top uh, here, I think, if I'm on the right screen, up here. Um, so, uh, Yes, use this. You can share this with people in your labs as well. Again, try and disseminate knowledge as far as possible. That would be really, really great. Um, so Compute Nodes, I've already spoken to a lot of people about this and emailed them, so hopefully everything should, should already be set up here. 
Um, at the end of the NGS lecture, we'll I'll have a 10 minute sort of tech support thing. So if people are having problems there, we can try and um, uh, fix any problems that we have. But you should already have a link uh, in an email that I sent on Friday, I think it was, which should be called workshop span 22 VM info. And in there should be a link which should follow the structure of spam 22, your surname, first name, and a number. Um, when you click on this, it will firstly ask you to log in via your Life Sciences RI account or Denby account. This is what we went through um, in the instructions I sent uh, quite a few weeks ago. And so if you have to log in with org ID or your email, just do whatever. Um, if you log in successfully, which hopefully you do, um, you should see a, a login window from something called Apache Guacamole. The password and the username is both Denby or lowercase. So it's just to write this down, I'm not understand if you've not already. Um, when you log on, you should see a window like this. If it's a black screen, try just clicking a couple of times. It might be in like screensaver mode. Um, and if for whatever reason you're logged out or you need to type in a password for a user called Ubuntu, you need to use the password O-G-V-K-Y-F. So again, I would highly recommend you write this down. Um, if you need this, you shouldn't need to use it, uh, I hope. I should have set it up so you don't have to, but in case you do, there, that's there. I can also share this on Slack uh, or if um, or send it by the Gather Town. Or let, uh, in fact, I will do that now. Give me one moment. OGV, there we go. And this should be the same for every node, should be the same for everybody. Good. Then the other thing that you'll need for day two is a GitHub account. So please make sure you have, have this. This can be temporary, you can delete it after if you wish. Um, although I would recommend having it anyway, primarily just because the vast majority of bioinformatics tools are now stored on GitHub. Um, there is a lot of um, extra wizzy things you can do on there as well. And also if you're a student and you have a, a, an email, a student email account, um, it's actually very easy and straightforward to get a pro account. The nice thing about this is that you get unlimited um, private repositories. So while you're doing a project, you can store and back up all your code there. Um, there's a bunch of other extra sort of things you can get for free for quite a few years. And in fact, I still have mine. They're not so strict in keeping it. So um, uh, it's, I generally say it's, recommend do, it's worth doing. Then for ECTS and certificates, so like I said, this is a, an official course, and um, you can actually get a credit, a credit for this, essentially. Um, if you are in Europe and your institution is using this ECTS uh, system, you are able to get ECTS points from JSMEC Graduate School. And at the same time, if in the US, where they don't have this system, we can get a certificate part participation, which you can then use towards your, your program. Everyone who will get both, essentially. Um, uh, but you will only get this if you are attended, so if you attend the, the course. So we will be make, taking attendance. If you have like a doctor's appointment or something like this, or a, a, like a visa appointment, please let us know and we will mark that down, that's not going to exclude you. But you will otherwise only get these um, yeah, certificates uh, or points if you uh, attend the entire course, so just keep that in mind. So today, We'll be having yeah the introduction to NGS from me, and then the two sessions of Bare Bones Bash, and then finally the roundtable instructions. We'll keep it relatively um, easy, which is we get to know each other. We can just talk a bit, talk about what people are doing, uh, uh, where they're from, and so on. Um, and yeah, are there any questions for the time being? <laughs>